In Creo Parametric, you can use a multi-objective design study in the Behavioral Modeling Extension, or BMX, to find solutions to problems with conflicting design objectives. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have the chassis for a train, and we discovered through structural analysis that it is not meeting its requirements in terms of loads. So we have to make it stronger. And you get the assignment, make it stronger, you say, no problem. But the boss also says, and I want you to make it lighter at the same time. And you say, that's a problem. It actually isn't with BMX and multi-objective design studies. There we can see how we can find solutions where we're making this both stronger and lighter. First, let me orient you to the model. So the main feature in here is a variable section sweep. If I click on edit definition, you'll see the old style model dialog box. Yes, this part comes from Pro Engineer a long time ago, but there are multiple trajectories and we have a cross section for the I-beam. And so we're going to use those different dimensions for the I-beam as our design variables. Let me go back to the protrusion and rather than edit definition, I'm going to use edit dimensions and let's zoom in over here. We've got three different dimensions for the I-beam flange in here. Let me go to the tools menu and then switch dimensions. So we can see that we have a D28 dimension, a D27 dimension, and a D171 dimension. I'm gonna start off by renaming those dimensions so that they are more intuitive. And so instead of D28, I am going to call this the flange width. And let's go to the D27 dimension. I am going to call this one the flange thickness. And let's go to the D171 dimension. This is for the web, so I'm going to call this one the web thickness. Just a little more into it. Oops, what did I do wrong? Oh, let's change that. Accidentally put a dash in there. There we go, and let me click on the background of the screen. Now just help me later on when I'm setting up the multi-objective design study. Let's repaint the screen. And next thing that I will do, at some point since I want to make this stronger, I'm going to need to do some cross-section mass properties, which means I need to have a cross-section in here. The Let's create a plane for the cross-section. Let me turn on my plane display. And I'll select this datum plane and click on the plane icon. I'm going to drag it out in this direction. And let's use a value of 40 to locate it. And click the OK button. So that's where we will measure the cross section. And to see what the cross section looks like, let's go to the View tab. And then I'll click on Planar Cross Section. And I'll use DTM7. Let's show a hatch pattern, and let's also use the default color for the section for the properties. Let's change the name to A, and then hit the check mark. And I always like to make sure that the hatching looks good. Let me edit the hatching, and then let's double the number of lines a few times. There we go. I don't need to see my planes anymore, so let's turn off the plane display for a moment. So next step, I need to create some datum analysis features that will end up giving me the other different design constraints I want to use in my study. I'll go to the analysis tab and here we have the mass properties command. I will click on it and we'll do it for our solid geometry. Let's preview the information and then click on the feature tab and right now we're not creating this as a feature. Let's change the drop down list from quick to feature, and then go to feature. And by default, it's going to generate some different parameters in here for the volume, the surface area, and the mass. I'm only interested in the mass and for the name of the feature. Oh, let's just leave it the same and click the OK button. So there you see my mass properties feature in the tree. Let's also create our cross-section 
mass properties in order to give us our inertia calculation. To get to that command, you can go to the mass properties drop down list, and here we have the cross section mass properties. We're going to use a plane. The plane I want to use is the one that I just created, DTM7, and so you see the different results. Let's go to the drop down list that says quick and change this to a feature. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just leave the name. When I go to the Feature tab, let's make this wider so we can see the names of the different options in here. So here we have it creating a parameter for the cross-section area. I actually want the largest principal inertia. And let me change the name of this. Call it Prin Inertia Max. And be aware that you can also often create datums like coordinate systems and points in some of these datum analysis features. But again, for what I'm doing here, I don't need that. Let's click the OK button. And now we have our cross-section mass properties. Now we're ready to create our multi-objective design study. Let me turn off my datum planes once more. And to make it, you're going to go to the drop-down list for feasibility and optimization studies. And here we have the multi-objective design study, or the MODS. I'll click on it. And here we have the dialog box for setting this up. I'll start off by clicking on the new button to create a new design study. You can change the name if you want. And then to define this, you're going to set up something called a master table. And so I'll click on this icon to, to define the master table. Let me move the dialog box off to the side. And for our different design variables, I'll use the pick icon. And I'll just select the protrusion out of the model tree. And now I'm going to select my various different dimensions to use in here. We'll use the flange width, the flange thickness, and the web thickness. And so for these different dimensions, I'm going to expand the range of values. I'm going to say that the flange width, let's vary between 2 and 4. By default, it's going to give you initial values that are plus and minus 10% of the dimension's current value. But again, sometimes it helps to open these up to a wider range of possibilities. And let's change these other dimensions as well. Let's allow the web thickness to go between the same values, 0.75, and let it max out at 1.5. So there we have the values that we will vary during the study. Now we'll specify our design goals. So let's click on the Design Goals button, and I'll select the two different parameters I generated in the Datum Analysis features using the Control key, and then click OK. And so now we've got them listed in here. So this is what we're going to have in the master table the different design constraints that will be calculated, and the dimensions that are allowed to be varied. And be aware that you do have the ability to control the sampling method. We'll use the automatic sampling as opposed to doing it manually. I will click the OK button. And so now we want to compute the design study. Let me repaint the screen. To compute it, we will use the exclamation point icon. And when I do that, it asks me, hey, how many experiments do you want to generate? I want to generate a whole lot. By default, it's giving me 16. That's too few. Let's crank this up to 256. And then you can hit the Enter key or the check mark. And when I do that, if you take a look in the message area, it's generating a whole bunch of different models. And for each one of those models, it is calculating our mass and our maximum principal moment of inertia for each of these. And so we'll let this run for a bunch of seconds and then come back when it's done. Okay, our multi-objective design study has completed our 256 experiments. I'm going to make this a little bit wider and so we can see 
for each one of the different experiments, we have it listing our mass properties and our principal moments of inertia. But I'm not going to go through this entire list to find the values that I want. Let's start off by graphing these results. So we've got an icon here to graph the study. When I click on it, we get the dialog box. And I'm going to put on the x-axis the mass of the model. And then if I go to the tab for the y-axis, we can graph our principal, our maximum principal inertia. And be aware that you can also select the different design variables if you want to graph those as well in other graphs, but I don't. So I will click on the graph button. And here we get the results. We can make this a little bit wider. And so we see the mass numbers. Here we see the principal moments. And so you can see all the different experiments. And obviously, some of these dots that are kind of low over here means that you have for the same mass a lower principal moment, which means that it's weaker. It's not as good. So I want to filter down these results so that we have for the various different data points the maximum inertia for the minimum mass. So to do that, let's close out of the graph and then close the graph dialog box. We're going to derive a new table from this table. And you can get to that from this icon, derive new table, or you can right click on the master table and then choose derive. We get a dialog box with two different methods of filtering this down, either by using constraints, so you can specify minimum and maximum values for the different design goals, or you could use a Pareto application to it. In this case, we have the goals. And right now, it's excluding both of those, but if I click on the cell, you get a drop down list where you can choose instead to minimize or maximize the value. So I want to minimize the mass and for the principal moment we want to maximize that one and this is why i always make an analogy between a multi-objective design study and buying a house so for example when you buy a house hey you want the most number of rooms that you can get for the lowest price here we want to have the maximum inertia for the lowest mass so Let's type in a name for this one, and I'll just call it Pareto for lack of originality, and then click the OK button. And so now it filtered down those 256 experiments down to 44. Once again, we can graph it, and we'll graph mass on the X. Click on the Y tab, and we'll graph inertia there, and then hit the graph button. So here you see for the various different data points, eh, pretty much everywhere we're getting the maximum mass for the, excuse me, the maximum inertia for the minimum mass. Be aware that this chart tool is the same chart tool that was added in PTC MathCAD Prime 5. And so there's a whole lot of different formatting that you can do to this one and then you can save it out if you want to use this in your different design reports but let's close out of the graph i want to filter the actually let's go back to the graph i wanted to show something else let's hit the graph button so we've got all these different results now we want to filter this down even more and let's say that you know we come up with all these different potential options to use we can say okay let's find the one where we're going to have a maximum mass of 3,000. So we can cut down on the list of experiments even more by deriving another table. So let's right click on, oops, let's close out of the graph dialog box. Let's right click on Pareto and drive another one. And this time I will use constraints and I'll leave the maximum principal inertia at its values, but let's change the max of the mass to 3,000. And then for the name of the table, let's call it max 3000 and then click the OK button. So now this filters it down to just 22 results. And so I can see from the list inside of here, OK, it's pretty much got the mass, the maximum mass up at the top and then declines down as we go through here pretty much. But let's once again take this one and then we can 
graph the different studies. Let's once again put mass on the x and then the inertia on the y. And so fewer values, and I can see, okay, for this one here, where we're getting the maximum principal inertia, looks like the mass is about 2981.5. Hey, let's find that result in the list. It's this one, record number nine. And so now that I found a candidate, we can right click on this and choose show model. And in the dialog box, we can see, well, it's got the names of the dimensions. Let me see if I can go to tools and then switch dimensions. Hold on a second. Let me save this. I was going to save this at the end, but I just saved the design study and let's close it out for a second. I just want to make sure I switch dimensions so I can see the different dimensions. Now I'll go back to analysis and then the multi-objective design study. Let's retrieve that design study. And so now let's go back to this list. And here we have 2981.5 for the mass. Let's show the model. And now that I have switched the dimensions, I should have done that back earlier, we can see that it's using 3.88 for the flange width and 0 0.80 for the flange thickness and 1.17 for the web thickness. So I can see the dimensions that are updated inside of here based on that experiment. Let's close the model in its own little window. Let's say I want to use this model. If I want to save it, I can right click and then save the model. And be aware that you've got those same icons available in the ribbon up at the top. And it's also available from one of the drop down menus. But let's save our model. And here we have it. It's giving it the name of the model and then underscore and the number of the experiment. Let's just use a, another name, train, chassis, optimize, and click the OK button. And so the model represented by record nine was successfully saved. And now I'll just save the design study. I did that earlier, but usually after you set all this information up, you can use the save design study because you're not going to save a multi-objective design study as a feature in the model tree just because it takes so long to calculate. But by saving it out to disk, this is something I can retrieve later on if I ever want to see the results or run a similar experiment later on. So now that we've got that done, let's click the close button. Let me now open up the model in its own separate window. And so now you can see that we've got our part with the appropriate dimensions. If I go to this protrusion and then edit, you can see that this version of the model has those same optimized dimensions as we saw in the little small window. So that's how you can use a multi-objective design study in order to find design solutions for conflicting design objectives. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.